So hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Lean Business Agility. Today with a guest here in South Florida mm -hmm. with Troy McGinnis. Hi. Okay, hi Troy. So, Troy, you are the data expert. You are the magician of the numbers. I'm the chief nerd. Chief nerd officer. Perfect. So what do you do for a living? Uh, <laughs> play with numbers. <laughs> play with numbers uh, and uh, try and get teams and people to make better decisions using data. Okay. So what kind of data? Uh, well, there's not one, one silver bullet. I, I guess you know, the, the one mm. mortal sin about uh, is setting up dashboards for teams or setting up a metric is that if you do set a metric as a target, people will, will achieve it. Yeah. But you, what you really don't get to see is the damage they've done doing that. Uh, so, so you're stepping in uh, to a team, so what are you doing What there? are you trying to do? Yeah. So you need to set up, whenever you measure something, you need to set up another measure that captures when people try and achieve that measure too well. Mm. So when they try and overdrive a measure or they try too hard to, uh, to get a, one metric that you're showing on a dashboard in the lunchroom higher, uh, you need another metric that can detect and show that uh, this is being overdriven. You're mm. going, you're pushing that one metric too hard. So normally you want to always have some metric and a compensating metric to mm. determine damage. Um, so really when I set up a dashboard, I'm looking at setting up conflicting measures that uh, no one will ever be good at any or four of the measures. Uh, and in fact, moving one, should you should see a compensating move in the others. Okay. If you don't see that, then your data is being gamed and you're not getting accurate data. Okay, nice. So uh, do you have uh, some examples? Okay. Um, well, the classic one, of course, would be throughput. If, if we start working teams over time or nights or start uh, if they start working and operating at an unsustainable pace, then no. we should start detecting work being signed off prematurely and we should see more escape defects going past the team boundary. That would be an indication that the team is probably operating too fast for the skill set and the size it has mm. to reliably deliver um, day in, day out. So that's a case where we've detected overdriven uh, throughput by seeing a decrease in quality. What I understand is you, you need multiple measures so that uh, yeah. if, you, if you measure one thing, people try to achieve it, then the sub-optimize probably something else, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, but um, what kind of data are you collecting? Ah. So what do we need to set this up? Well, we need to set it up. Um, you know, the, the, the four basic measures are how fast are you are doing something? Yeah. Um, how well are you doing quality? Um, how predictably you can do it? If, if you sort of, uh, are you able to maintain a pace or do you get you know, a very high throughput and a very mm. low throughput? Um, and then how reliably you can do it. How often do you actually get to uh, achieve it? So I think that's the four. Um, it doesn't really matter as much what measure you choose to measure or from the data you have available. Mm. It just matters that you've got something in each of those four areas. Um, how sustainable, you know, how reliable, how predictable, how fast, how mm. good. So, uh, in my world, I, I think the data I tend to start off with, if I could measure one thing, if I can get all teams to just do one thing, it's measuring the, the date that work's completed. Okay. Because just the date, just from that one date alone, you can get the throughput data. How many items are completed in a period of time. No. And that really helps you forecast the future because if you've got something that's of 10 units and you know that your, your team or group can achieve, can, can achieve four units per week, you're looking about two and a half weeks to, mm. to get that work done. Uh, so completion date is one bit of data I'd love every team to do. If you can get two bits of date, data, uh, get the date that things were started. Mm. Um, that lets you measure cycle time. It lets you see um, from, the, from one unit of thing that they complete, is the size of that getting bigger or smaller based on on how uh, long it is. And there'll be natural variability in there based on some things are harder than others, hmm. but we're more after from that, just that start date, we can start seeing the pattern of okay. the size of things and we can use that data. Um, from those two, we can get throughput, we can get cycle time, and we can also get the arrival rate and departure rate hmm. and we can start seeing if the teams are starting more than they're finishing or finishing more than they're starting. So that's three of our four measures just off the, off the bat. 
And the fourth one about quality is the toughest one, to tell you the truth. Um, getting, defining quality is very contextual for the yeah. organization that they have. Normally there's some rate that things didn't work in production or things had to be rolled back or the time taken to fix production issues. Um, you're going to need to capture some data or whatever quality is in your context. If, it, if you've got nothing else, to also track when you're finishing items, whether they were a defect or planned work mm. or unplanned work. And maybe your quality measure is the ratio of planned to unplanned work. Okay. You want to keep that running sort of steady. So completion date, start date, and whether it's a defect or a planned work. Okay, so the work type the work kind type. of thing. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. card type. So with these uh, three things, you can do quite a lot, actually, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, and um, so we were talking, you, were, you were talking about uh, quality. Mm -hmm. um, that's also what I, see quite, uh, what I see quite often. So what is quality? Is it the number of boxes going down? Is it the number of don't know, user acceptance failures is going down? Is it the number of support calls is going down? So uh, quality is a, is a quite broad definition. So as you said, uh, it's, yeah. it's contextual to your uh, environment, right? What is the best number for quality? Uh, well, best is hard. I mean, I think we know at the end of the day, um, quality is in the eye of the customer, not mm. ourselves. So it's whether the product they have in their hands is better than the previous one they had. It's not about any attribute we apply to it. It's about whether um, it's whether the product we're releasing is solving more problems than it was previously. Now, there are obviously some boundary conditions. So there are no. some where this is unacceptable, and I'm not saying you should overlook those. But I do think when you get into the continuous delivery world, um, you know, we're dealing with making sure that the customer has the best quality product we can deliver. And that's what you need to strive to measure. So um, the only best measure I've come up with there is asking them set okay. up a rotating sample of once per week doing a survey to your customers and sort of saying, is the product you have better than the product you had last, re last release, yes okay. or no? And start looking at uh, that as a, as a sample, no. uh, sample set. Um, because in, at the end of the day, even not releasing a feature because it has one outstanding defect, mm. when the feature, even in its current state, would have given the customer a better experience, mm. it's a bad decision not to release it. Okay. So uh, what I heard is we don't need a lot of data, actually, a lot of different data, no. right? Yeah. And uh, let's assume we collect all this data. What do we do with it? So is there any tool or whatever where we can represent this data yeah. and make a meaning out of it? Because one thing is collecting data, the other thing is Nobody analyzing is it. Analyzing right? it, that's right. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I, I have a spreadsheet that's available that just takes those inputs. It takes the completion date. I will put the link, put the link the in. Notes. Yeah, it takes the completion date the start date and whether it's planned or unplanned work. And from that, it builds, uh, I think, 20 different charts. And it has another page which is set up for having one, one of each of the four measures. Yeah. Now, I've picked four charts I like for those four, uh, but there's another 17 charts to choose from. And I think that when you get it, you should sort of go through it with your team and sort of saying, we think this measure represents quality for us better than the one Troy chose. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so, so as a spreadsheet, I've tried to make it that um, there's very minimal getting started time. You yeah. just need you just need the completion date, the start date, and the card type, um, and and it, and it gives you the balanced four quadrant sort of metric measure okay. to um, hopefully not allow the team to kill itself by over striving in any one of those metrics. Yeah. Okay. So we don't need a lot of data. We don't need a lot of different data. Mm -hmm. We have a tool where we can plug everything in. Mm -hmm. This last question: Why should we do this? Ah, <laughs> I think this is, we're because trying we to, can. because we can, because it's there. <laughs> no, I mean, what we're trying to do with these metrics is get the teams to make smart trade-offs between those four different balanced metrics. Um, you know, you're setting up an environment where the team can propose a change in the process and actually see that it, they had some impact and it occurred. And if they don't, you should be suspicious right. that, you know, we, we did, we doubled our throughput, but we didn't pay a price anywhere. No, something's <laughs> wrong with the data. Yeah. So I think um, from a, during the retrospectives or stand-ups, you know, it's great for the team to be able to see that its work is actually having an impact. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's a, a worthy way of starting to help people internalize um, their impact on, on, on 
a, f a set of balance metrics rather than just any one. Yeah. So can we say it's a good feedback loop? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's, and, it's, and it's currently in a lot of places I see it's a missing feedback loop. Um, it's just assumed that Agile is good. Yeah. Oh, I think that's a very nice word for the ending. <laughs> Thank you, Troy, for your time. Um, yeah, I will put the link and everything to the spreadsheet uh, in the video. Yeah. And yeah. Hope we have some more nice days here in sunny South Florida. Oh, we always will. Yeah. Thank you, Troy, Thanks. and goodbye. Bye.